Next, we'll add a vignette around our subject to draw attention towards the center. I'll just start off with a marquee tool and drag out a selection. I like to twist this to the right a little bit. I could use the pen tool and get a more precise selection, but if you're in a hurry and just want to make a small adjustment to your marquee, go up here and go to Select, Transform Selection, and you get Handles so that you can actually transform your move your marching ants around and I'll make it a little bigger you can hold the control key if you want to just warp one edge just want to get these dogs mainly in the view maybe make this whole thing a little bigger so this is kind of a fast way to get more of a precise thing there we go select that and this one's fairly straightforward I'm gonna actually put this above everything including the color correction layers and I'm going to add this as an adjustment layer. Nothing fancy here, just solid color. And I'll choose black. Of course, it's the opposite of what we want. So I'll just invert it, Control I. And then we're going to blur this edge just by filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'll set the radius somewhere around 150, 200. You want it soft enough where you don't really notice it, but not so soft that it's eating into your subject matter. So you want to keep the borders of your vignette far enough away from the center. As you can see, I've got some luxury of some good breathing room here, so might even make it a little more. And of course, we're not going to keep this much of it. In fact, we're just going to go to the opacity layer. And the idea is just to bring in enough where it does the job. But the moment you notice there's a vignette, like already you can tell, that's a vignette. And the purposes for these kinds of things, I don't really want it to even be known that we've got it. More of a subconscious sort of thing. So you just move that slider around. Of course, it, you can make the image smaller, and sometimes that helps so you don't get lost in the detail. There's sort of nothing. I'd say something about like that would do it, where it's not too obvious. Let's zoom in again. You can see the before and the after. In the next step, we're going to apply noise reduction and output sharpening. That will be preparing the image for print. Uh, as preparation for this, I'll say one last thing in this segment. If you're going to do this and you plan to resize your image, you'll want to do this first before you do the output sharpening. You would go to Image, Image Size, and then change the dimensions. You can see this is going to print out at 16 by 10 at 240. If you deselect this resample image, this effectively becomes a calculator, so I can just run some tests. The 240 is what we brought in from Camera Raw. Let's try 300. You could even go as low as, say, 140. And look, we're going to get a poster size print. In general, the farther away the viewer is going to be, the smaller you can make the DPI, the resolution here. Even 100, if it's going to be you know, part of some display to be viewed at a distance. But for general purposes, I'd recommend 240. You can get a nice size print from this. So anyway, I'm not going to resize this image, but if you wanted to, you would do it here. Reset this. And then if you actually want to change the size, then of course you keep the resample image on. Keep this on bicubic. It used to be back in the day where processors were a little slow. You'd use one of these that work faster, but you could just keep it on bicubic. Anyway, we're not going to resize our image. So in the next segment, we're going to take care of noise reduction and output sharpening.